Today, on this episode of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs, we are going to talk about filters. What's going on everyone? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs and I want to thank you so much for joining me today because today we are going to talk about filtration, uh, air filters. And uh, while we're on the subject of air filters, we're going to talk about cabin filters, which we're going to replace both on the 2015 Ford Fusion today. Um, being that we are just now entering our fourth year of ownership with this delightful 2015 Ford Fusion. It is time that we start including this car a little more in the vlog series. And within this next year, this year of ownership, there are things that I do want to do to this vehicle maintenance wise um, that uh, we can use for the vlogs. Uh, eventually this year I am going to do the transmission fluid drain and fill. We're not flushing. I don't like I don't like flushing. We're just gonna drain the old fluid out. We're gonna put the new fluid in. I just don't know if I'm gonna do that here at home or if we're gonna end up doing it at work um, on the lift. It would be easier on the lift, but I can probably also try to do it here at home. I do need to get a better jack, however, because um, of what I what I have to do to position the car. Um, for that particular service so um, but th that'll be something that we're gonna do within this year and the filters um, you know both the air filter and cabin filter have not been changed in this car with me um, both of them should have been replaced when I bought the car because as part of the uh, Ford CPO process certified pre-owned process the air filter and the cabin filters are supposed to be changed. So both of the filters should have been changed a little over 30,000 miles ago. And even then, that's probably technically too long to be running it, any of these filters. But um, that's why I figured, you know, it is time to change them just as, you know, preventative maintenance trains here. And uh, we're going to take you guys along. Um, I'm going to take you guys along for the journey as, as I usually always do. Um, but then, you know, since we have the filters here and whatnot, I just wanted to talk briefly about the filters and why they are important um, for both the actual engine and your, your climate control system even. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes filters, actually a lot of times, Filters are just something that get completely overlooked when it comes to vehicle maintenance, um, and they're you know they're important. Um, but again, uh, people don't always think uh, about the filters, and to be honest, I see it every day. So that's why I'm, I'm I'm bringing you this video with with some of this information. When it comes to the engine air filter, that is probably. <laughs> probably very critical it's a very critical piece of equipment used in making your engine run efficiently and keeping the engine healthy overall um, this is a brand new clean filter you can actually see through it maybe you can't I can because I'm facing the way I'm facing the light these are important um, you know Engineer filters, see, the, the way that I like to put this is, um, and I, I actually, I had to use this analogy on my mom a long time ago when um, she still had her, her 04 Malibu. Um, the one day I did an oil change on it, pulled the filter out, it was, it was black. And um, actually, I think I documented it. It's time. Oh. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> the air filter. Next oil change, we gotta change this. Okay. I don't remember the last time we did it. It's getting pretty dingy. Well, okay, 
Okay, that's an oil filter. This is the air filter. The way that I had to tell her, uh, you know, what this is, you know, I, I use this analogy because it's true. So imagine yourself in a room, okay? You're in a room, and the room is filled with dirt in the air, dust, smoke, anything that makes it hard for you to breathe. What do you do when you breathe all that stuff in? You, you start to, uh, you know, over time, you start to choke or cough. Uh, some people can't breathe at all, you know, um, because you're breathing all that stuff in, and that stuff collects in your windpipe, in your, in your lungs, and the more you breathe that stuff in, the more damage it can actually do to your body, to your lungs and such. And, you know, if you can't breathe well, how do you feel? You feel awful. You, you, you feel weak because you're not getting the proper amount of oxygen and your body's trying to fight all this stuff off. Okay, the best way that I like to put it is how do you feel when you're breathing in a room filled with smoke or dust? Okay, I got it. Your car needs to breathe too, and this keeps all of the bad stuff out. So when this starts to plug up, the car can't breathe. Hey, did I ever have that change before since I had my car? Yeah, probably because if you didn't, okay. this would be probably completely black. I just don't remember seeing a thing like that. I don't remember the last time I did it. I, ironically enough, you know, <laughs> it's everybody's tired of hearing about masks, but I'm just using it for the analogy. So if you put a mask or something over your, your face... Um, and you go into that same room and and you now have a you know you you have a filter you can breathe because you have something that's filtering out all that dust and all that dirt and smoke and stuff and then you don't really have a problem breathing and you feel fine well an air filter does the same thing for a car engine um this protects all of the outside pollutants like you know pollen and and road dirt and and all kinds of stuff it keeps this keeps that stuff from getting into the engine because if you have any bit of debris or any dirt and stuff that gets into the engine over a long period of time it is going to damage the engine it's going to damage stuff on you know the intake side it's going to damage you know the valves or even the combustion chambers i mean cuz the car needs air just as much as a human does. That car, the car engine has to have all of that, the, pro, the appropriate amount of air, um, to air to fuel ratio, in order for it to run efficiently, in, in order for it to run perfectly. And if, um, if there's dirt and stuff getting into the engine over time, guess what? This engine is not going to last. It's going to, there's going to be damage done over time. So the air filter is important for that reason. It is very important because it keeps pollutants and stuff out of the engine. And uh, some people don't look at it like that, but you know that that's the analogy that I have for you guys. If if nobody ever really even thought of it like that, um, this is just as important to an engine as like a respirator or uh, you know just something to keep dirt and stuff out of your lungs and stuff you know it's the same kind of concept but over time these things will collect so much dirt so much dust and it will start to clog them up and then you also you know your engine is is struggling to uh, breathe and get the proper amount of oxygen for it to run and that's where your performance will come in because if these get you know black <laughs> if they get dirty enough they turn black and um, it can affect your fuel economy because if there's less air being brought into the engine for it to burn efficiently for, for the combustion to actually take place if it, uh, the way that it should then guess what this the computer is going to deliver more fuel to the engine to make up for the lack of oxygen which isn't good because now you know you could have like a rich condition if there's more fuel being added than oxygen it's gonna make the car run with lower uh, you know your fuel economy is gonna drop and if you keep doing it over time it can you know mess up the spark plugs 
and just do other damage because, again, you're not running the engine effectively. So an air filter is always an important thing to replace after so long. Um, we're going to look at mine, you know, after 30,000 miles and see how bad it is. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an interval for this, and offhand I don't know what the service intervals would be. A lot of times it's just by how it looks, you know. Um, so we'll pull the other one out either way I'm replacing it but we'll pull it we'll pull the one out here uh, right now and we'll see how it looks after 30,000 miles and obviously replace it and go from there to be quite honest when you're replacing your air filters in just about any vehicle they they're usually not that difficult to do I mean anybody anybody can do it a lot of times you don't even need tools because most of them like like the one here on the Fusion, they just have these little plastic clamps that hold the cover down. So there's not a whole lot to it. Anybody can do it. So we release the clamps there. Now we just have to pull up on this and then wiggle the you know tabs out of there like that. If this harness gets in the way, you could always unplug it. This is for the uh, mass airflow sensor, I believe, on this one. the way now we can move this in some cases depending on the vehicle it might be easier to actually loosen up the worm clamp here with a you know like a hex head or a flathead and then you can actually disconnect it from the intake tube and so depending on the car that could be helpful so 30,000 miles how's it look eh, it's not the worst I've seen a lot worse but it is, you know, darkening. See the difference in color between our used and new. So, yeah, this one, I would, you know, I'm glad I decided to buy a filter after we're looking at it, you know. Um, you don't want it to get pitch black. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of them, you know, I see a lot of those come in all the time at work. Um, and you know what the sad thing is, is... Some people still shoot them down. They don't want to replace them. But this looks appropriate. This is 30,000 miles in. You know, it's it's not the worst. I, I actually was thinking it was going to be worse than this. But, so yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a good thing that we are throwing a new one in there. And even if you look in here, you look at all the dirt and stuff that sits at the very bottom. You know, this is where... All of that air comes in from the outside and it just looks kind of disgusting in there but if you look at the top half look at how clean that is doesn't that look nice so that is why this air filter is important to your engine because all the stuff sitting in here that comes in from the outside all of that can collect in the engine but it doesn't and that's why it's important to keep a good clean air filter in your car. And then most times they only fit one way. You always want the fins to face the side that's going, that's you know bringing the air in. And the flat side usually is on the uh, intake side. So now that that's in there, then you just have to get your tabs in there like that. Push it down. And that's it see anybody can change their air filter obviously if you're unplugging any sensors you want to make sure you plug it back in and on this one there's a red lock push the red lock in and that's it that's all there is to it and people a lot of people just don't care to change their air filter for that you know it's so simple now some other vehicles, like my Grand Am for instance, they have screws, you know, there are screws that hold the air cleaner cover in place. Um, I know GM and uh, some Chryslers, I mean, they're known for using screws instead of the little clamps like the, the Fusion has. But 
even then, you know, it's really not that that difficult, you know, to to handle. So, if you've never attempted to change your air filter before, give it a shot. It's really not that difficult, and it can definitely keep your engine healthier and keep good fuel economy, which also saves you money in the long run when it comes to gasoline. Another thing to pay attention to also when it comes to like the air filter and stuff like that is if you have a rodent problem, if you have rodents that live in your car while you're not using it, <laughs> um, and I've seen it too. I had an Explorer come in one time and when I opened up the air filter housing, you just seen how the filter itself was eaten by a rodent who was living on the underside of it at some point. He chewed all the way through the filter up to the metal grating on the one side. And then when you take the filter out, it's just a huge nesting area. I honestly don't even know how that car was able to take in the air that it, you know, it was taking in to run. It was so plugged up and disgusting. Obviously at that point, they were kind of forced to buy an air filter um, because the one that was in there completely unusable at that point it was it was bad so always look for that also it might not be a bad idea like I said to every once in a while take a look at your air filter make sure that it's still clean enough and uh, take a you know make sure nothing's living in there also you know that could be some bad news if if you don't catch that uh, in time and the next filter we're going to talk about is the cabin filter the passenger compartment pull-in filter. Um, this has to do with the, you know, your climate control system. Um, not as important as an air filter, but <laughs> if your system has a filtration system, a filter on it from factory, uh, and most vehicles nowadays do, um, this is an important filter to replace every so often. And that's why, again, we're going to do it on the Fusion because uh, if if they replaced it at 30,000 miles, you know, back, you know, years ago, um, like they should have, then, you know, it's probably due for a change now. So we're going to take care of it. I will show you guys how to do it on this Fusion, um, and, but for the most part, it's it's kind of similar to um, in, in any maker model, pretty much that has a filter system on their um, on their cars so in order for you to get any kind of air circulation in your car the air comes from the outside and that is what the windshield cowl grates are for so whenever you see this on your car um, you always want to make sure that for one they're not plugged up with a bunch of debris depending on where you live lucky for me I don't really have any trees that I park near uh, back here so if you live in an area where there are trees and stuff like here's a helicopter here that's probably from my mom's house uh, some pine needles and whatnot but chances are if you live if you have to park under trees and stuff this gets clogged up um, always best to kind of keep this clear when you can because uh, like I said this is important this is where your air for your cabin comes in this is pretty much where it all comes from um, it has to come in from from here so that being said you know dirt and stuff you know can possibly make its way through this netting this, these grates and into the actual HVAC box where the blower motor fan is um, and then all of a sudden you're breathing in you know smells you're breathing in some dust and stuff that could come in through the vents well the cabin air filter stops all that from happening so in most vehicles the fan blower would be located behind the passenger side of the dashboard and in most cases that is where you're gonna find the cabin filter so the cabin filter comes in this huge box <laughs> But this is all it is and it's just uh it's you know it's just a filter that collects pollen or you know anything that can any kind of allergen for the most part 
And if these get clogged up, then you might notice you have lack of air coming out of your vents. You could have some smells, like maybe some mildewy smell or something because maybe this is all soaked or got moldy or something over time. Um, the big one is usually if, if you have lack of air coming through the vents, if it's on high but it feels like it's on medium, this is probably plugged up. That could be a possibility. So that's all it is. And like I said, they're usually, usually on the passenger side of the dashboard. Um, in most cases, they're behind a glove box. Um, unless you have an escape, like a, a third generation escape, they're down here somewhere. I've only done one, one time, but they're, they're located at the bottom of the column somewhere. Um, but on the Fusion, it's actually not that bad to get to. It's actually pretty simple. And that's what we're gonna do now. We'll take a look to see how bad my cabin filter is after 30,000 miles. Like I said, if they changed it, the air filter looked like it was changed. This, hopefully they went through the process and decided to change it for me, like they should have. So on the Fusion, the first thing you wanna do, might help if you open this, yeah. You need to take off this little side cover here, which isn't that bad. And then we need to remove this guy. He's gonna come off in one piece. You just pry the little retaining tabs off. And that's pretty much it. And then we need to remove the glove box. And on this car, we have these seven millimeter screws up here. And then there are, there's a seven millimeter screw here. And there's a seven millimeter screw right there, right above the, yeah, see it right up there? So you need an extension for that one. All right, so I got my four screws out of my glove box. Now, I just got to pretty much pry the glove box out. Depending on whatever vehicle you're working with, you might have a wire for a light. Uh, in this case, I do. But you just gotta make sure that you do not, you know, pull it. There we go. And then there's your blower motor. That's usually, in most cases, what you're gonna see, um, <laughs> you know, in your vehicle. Um, so on mine, I have two Phillips screws. Looks like that have to be removed because the cabin filter sits right behind this little door. So we'll run in the house real quick. We'll get a Phillips screwdriver. We'll take those out and then we can access the filter. So in this case, once the screws are out, you can see where the screws are gone now. We're gonna use our one finger to pry the top and we're gonna use our thumb to push. And you can see that unlocks it from, ooh, there's, there's stuff in here. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's how you open it. And then there it is. And ooh, there's a lot more stuff in here than I thought. There's a chance that maybe this didn't get, uh, this didn't get replaced like it should have. So one thing you wanna keep in mind also, because there's gonna be a bunch of stuff on the top of this as we can see here. But um, if you have a shop vac, you might need to grab it. In this case, I might. You just don't want any of this stuff to fall into the blower motor. And if it does, you're gonna have to you know, get your vacuum and vacuum it out. Wow. I would not have thought that this was as bad as it is, to be quite honest. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go get the shot back. I see bits of paper and stuff in here. I bet, I bet maybe we had something living in here. Uh, whether it was before I bought the car or not, because this doesn't look like, this doesn't look like it was ever replaced, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Something was living in there. Wow. Look at that. I would not have... I did not suspect that at all. This is why it's important to check up on these things. <laughs> oh man. And it didn't even act like it was clogged up. That's impressive. That is very, very impressive. So, I think we're gonna have to go get the, uh, we're gonna have to go get the shop vac and, and vacuum, vacuum this out. There's a lot going on in there. There's a lot still stuck up there. We may, <laughs> we may have to drop the actual blower motor and attack it from uh, underneath. Sheesh, not really what I was expecting to do this afternoon, especially when it's almost 100 degrees out here. Look at that. I, yeah, there's a feather in there, ew. I think we're getting to the bulk of it now, I hope. Looks like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see anything else up there. I think that, I think that was it. All right, so I really didn't document this whole thing because at this point, um, only because it's freaking hot out here and it looks like as in my luck There's a storm coming So I'm just trying to get this done as fast as we can now, but I pulled the hush panel down There's two push pins like Christmas tree style one there one there. I just I just yanked it down and then I just undid the blower motor screws there were three of these They kind of have star heads in them also, but they're not they were eight eight millimeters and uh, I think I think it's ready to come out All right I try to Wiggle it out. Oh, yeah some stuff did. Oh, yep. Yeah some stuff fell in there. Good thing we did this so Sheesh Wow That's that was that was surprising guys. We got the blower motor out See, some more stuff fell out of there. Gross. Uh, yeah, I think I might have gotten it all at this point. I don't see anything else in there. So see, do you see the importance of that cabin filter? If that, ca if that cabin filter wasn't there, uh, then this stuff would have made it, you know, into the, into the squirrel cage is what they call that. Uh, and that would have definitely hindered the performance of that blower motor. And then, uh, who knows what could have ended up in the actual vents, you know? So, they have their purpose, for sure. So I'm going to shove the vacuum hose up there for a minute or so. Just kind of move it around, make sure we got everything out from the top. I don't see anything else. I think, I think we'll be okay. I just didn't want anything falling into the into the blower motor. All right, so now that we've vacuumed out someone's vacation home, uh, we can put our new filter in. I didn't put the blower motor back in yet because if that filter is gonna knock anything down, it'll fall 
you know, straight to the floor. So here we go. This is what I wanted to show you guys to begin with. <laughs> it's your cabin filter. Usually there's gonna be a direction where it says airflow and it's gonna have an arrow pointing down. In this case, this is how it's gonna go in because as you can see, when it's in the dashboard, slides in like that, the air gets sucked in from the windshield cowl downward. So it passes through the top of the filter and ends up obviously through the bottom. So that's the direction of the airflow. So now we're going to take this and we're just going to slide it in. Just inch it in there little by little. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's all there is to it. Um, so then you know, once that's in there as, as far as it's gonna go. Just close up your door. I think you might have to pull these little tabs back. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like that, there you go. That's it, then you're gonna take those two screws and you'll zip those in there. That didn't go according to plan. There we go. Okay, so then, you know, we'll just zip those in there. And uh, that'll be the air filter part. So now I just got to get the blower motor back in. All right, so we got everything put back together. I vacuumed up the carpet a little bit, got rid of the extra stuff that fell out of there. And uh, that's it. Cabin air filter changed. So there you have it. Um, the engine air filter, like I said, you know, anybody can take care of that on their own if they really wanted to. The whole cabin air filter thing could be a little more intensive um, depending on exactly what you have to do to get, get to it. It really isn't that difficult in this particular car, um, but as you've seen, we did have a little bit of an unfortunate circumstance and uh, that required a little more labor <laughs> a little more to do to uh, correct that issue um, but yeah so that's that is why it's important to check those filters if you have them uh, if your vehicle is equipped the air filter like I said same thing rodents like to get into the air filter housing they'll eat at the filter they'll clog up the filter they will destroy the filter I mean the, that's something that that can be checked easily and then like I said, I didn't. I wouldn't have even known that there was an issue with this in particular because uh, I still had good air and stuff like that. But that was a little. That was a little nest. Um, if that had been a lot worse, uh, I probably would have had lack of air, and uh, that could have been. It could have been, you know, worse. Worse than that. Uh, you know, they could have actually gone into the, the blower itself. But we're good. So I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I decided to change that and. Uh, as you've seen, they both needed to be changed. Uh, like I said, as far as interval, you know, you, you the engine air filter you usually don't want to be completely black. Um, what I, when I changed mine just now, that's a good time to change it. Um, could I have gone a little longer? Probably, but uh, I'm glad I changed it when I did. And as far as the cabin filter, I honestly don't know what the mileage spec is, if there is even a mileage spec. Um, it depends on the situation. If you park under trees all the time and there's leaves or su stuff that actually get into that cowl and into the filter, you might need to change it more often than I do. But then again, I apparently had a rodent in there at some point. Like I said, I don't even know if that was when I had the car. That filter honestly looks like it may have never been changed. They probably never did it when I bought it um, for how dark it was even without the rodent stuff on it. I don't know but regardless it's done and that is my video to you guys on filters so if you did enjoy this video and if you found it knowledgeable and entertaining give it a thumbs up comment subscribe also check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's vehicle spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise 
That's it. I'm just gonna sit here for a moment and I'm just gonna keep cooling off because it feels so good in here right now. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.